Question 41 says, an empty sled of mass 25 kilograms slides down a muddy hill with its constant speed of 2.4 meters per second. The slope of the hill is inclined at an angle of 15 degrees with the horizontal as shown in the figure above left. Calculate the time it takes the sled to go 21 meters down the slope. So in this problem, we're given an empty sled that has a mass of 25 kilograms. So we'll define mass as 25. And then for part A, we're calculating the time it takes for the sled to go down 21 meters. So from here, we know that 21 meters is our dis displacement. And we know that displacement we can express as delta x e equals 21. Now we're calculating the time. And it said the sled go down a hill with constant speed. And our velocity is going to be 2.4 meters per second. And since it's constant speed, acceleration is not changing, therefore it's zero. And from here, we can use our equation, velocity equals delta x over delta t. We know velocity, we know delta x when we're looking for t, so we'll express this equation in terms of t. So we get delta t equals delta x over velocity. Therefore, t is equal to 21 over 2.4 and t is equal to 8.75 which we can round to 8.8 .8. so t is 8.8 .8 seconds now if part b says on the dot, dot below this representing the sled draw and label a free body diagram for the sled as it slides down the hill so we know that this is the sled, and we know that the four, and now we know that there is a normal force acting upon the sled since it's staying on the ground or on the hill and not moving vertically. So we have a normal force F n, and we also have a force of gravity, force due to gravity. Force due to gravity, we can express is going to be perpendicular to the incline that we're going down. So it's going to go down like this. This will be the force of gravity. And then we have our two components here, which is going to be that's FGY and that's FGX. These are the two components of gravity, and they're going in this direction, since gravity is always going down. And we also have a friction force that's opposing the direction it's traveling in. So the sled is going this way, right? So friction force is going to oppose that, and it's going to go this way. Now part C says calculate the frictional force on the sled as it slides down the slope. We're calculating frictional force, and we know that friction equals mu times n normal force. To calculate frictional force here, we're not given what the value of friction constant mu is. So we're instead going to use our knowledge of forces. And from here, our free body diagram that we drew, we knew that we know that FGX is going this way, down, since it's going gravity. And we know that the force, two forces acting upon the sled is going to be FGX going this way, and friction force going this way. And we know that it's traveling at a constant speed, so that's our key point here, constant speed. So we know that friction force and FGX is equal, are equal to each other. So we can write that in terms of our equation, net force equals MAX in the X direction, friction force and normal force, and friction force and FGX. And we can say that as this direction is going to be positive, so we're going this take this and subtract friction force from it. So it's FGX minus friction force equals mass AX. From here we know that our angle was 15 degrees so extending this triangle right here we get an angle of 15 degrees and we know that force due to gravity is going to be 25, which is the mass of the sled, times gravity, which is 10, equals 250, so this is 250. We're looking for FGX over here, FGX, 
fgx is going to be opposite of the angle which is going to be sine 15 so fgx I'll write up here you know that fgx is going to be sine 15 times the gravitational force right here which is 250 so fgx is going to equal 64.7 fgx is 64.7 minus frictional force mass of the sled was 25 and acceleration was 0 so this cancels out so we don't need this so frictional force is equal to 64.7 so 64.7 is our answer over here that's in newtons now for part D, calculate the coefficient of friction between the sled and the muddy surface of the slope. We know that we calculate a frictional force from the part C. Frictional force was 64.7, and we know that frictional force is equal to mu times normal force, so we can set this equal to each other right over here. So 64.7 equals mu times normal force. Normal force, which is right here, if we draw it over here, this is going to be normal force. normal force and this is going to be our FGY over here which is the component of gravity. Now we know that normal force is equal to FGY since it's not moving in the vertical direction so our force due to gravity in the Y component is going to equal our normal force. Now we can write that as a net force in the Y direction equals MAY and we know that we can express it as up is positive so FN minus FGY equals zero since it's not accelerating in the vertical direction it's not bouncing up and down so we know that FN equals to FGY so if we solve for FGY we know FN and we know FN right here so FGY equals FGY is right here and it's adjacent to this 15 degree angle so it's, we're going to use cosine 15 times the gravitational force still 250 so FGY is going to equal 241.48 so 64.7 equals mu times 241.48 and mu equals 0 0.27 so we know that mu equals 0 0.27 now part E says the sled reaches the bottom of the slope and continues on the horizontal ground assume the same coefficient of friction and we're asked in terms of velocity and acceleration quantitatively no calculations are needed describe the motion of the sled as it travels on the horizontal ground so we know that the sled is going at a constant velocity of 2.4 meters per second so we'll write that the sled is traveling at a constant velocity of 2.4 meters per second and when it reaches horizontal ground the frictional force is going to oppose the velocity that it's going and it's going to eventually come to a stop and those are our answers